Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and in this video, we're gonna learn about pneumorphism as easy as possible. Now, whether you like it or not, pneumorphism is already trending in 2020. If you watch the videos of MKBHD, it's there in his logo and intro as well. So if it is there, it's definitely trending a little bit. Now, writing code for pneumorphism is actually super easy. All you need to do is take care about these three things and then we're gonna move on to the code part where I'm gonna show you what we have learned so far. Point number one, make sure that you're aware where your light source is. It needs to be just at one place. Usually, you're gonna see that it is usually in the top left corner, but it's totally on you. You can be as creative as possible. It can be on the top right corner, it can be just on left or just on right. Just make sure you know where your light source is. It's important. Second thing that is important is, in the new morphism, we play around with two kinds of shadows. One white shadow and one is the black shadow. So make sure that you're aware that whatever the element you're gonna be designing, whether that's a button or a container, it's gonna have two shadows. And of course, last but not the least, since we are playing around with the shadows white and black, your background cannot be white. It might look very near to white, but if you're gonna make it absolutely white or just default, it's not going to work. So it's a play of the little bit on the colors as well. Now that's all the thing that you need to know. Now let's move on to the computer and write some code, especially CSS for this new morphism. Go ahead and write code CSS for this new morphism. Now there are two kinds of designer, one which are playing in the gray area, one which are playing in the blue area. So both of them gives you a different background that you might want to implement. Again, there is no wrong or right, it just is a creativity. We're gonna playing around with a bit of the blue tone in the background. It's a little bit hard to specify in just these recordings, but yet it is blue tone here. So I have opened up my code editor on the left side and on the right hand side, we are just having a preview of what we are writing. So simply let's just go ahead and fire up uh, the simple emit code, which is going to help us to produce a simple document. There we go, and in the body, we're gonna have a couple of containers. So we're gonna have a container. So let's have the first container. Inside that, we are gonna have just one container, which is gonna have a class of new. There we go, and that's all what we need. Okay, this is looking a bit decent. Nothing is there on the screen. We're gonna go up here, and we're gonna write our CSS directly in the head, because it is just a tutorial. First and foremost, we are gonna remove all the paddings and margins so that we don't get some surprises at the last moment. So we're gonna have a margin and that's gonna be zero and we're gonna have a padding, not this one, padding of zero. There we go, nice and easy. Now, in order to make sure that these effect actually pops up on our eye, we're gonna change the body, uh, background color of the body. So we're gonna have a background there we go. And the specific color that I have chosen for this particular project is going to be DD E1 E7. E1 E7. So that's the color. It's a it's little bit difficult yet to find out that yes, this color is there, but don't worry, it's going to pop up in a second uh, once we have more element on this one. So first and foremost, uh, let's go ahead and have some of the styles for the container. So let's go ahead and have container. Basically, what I'll be doing is adding the flex in this container. I hope this is exactly the same because I am quite familiar with my typos. So we're gonna have display and we're gonna go for display of flex. We're gonna move everything to the center. So justify content, you goes to center, align items, you goes to center. And I'm also gonna specify my flex direction to columns so that everything just moves onto one column uh, below each other. And that's all what we need as of now. Let's go ahead and now let's code for this new. So we're gonna call this one that I have a class of new. There we go. First and foremost, I would like to have some of the backgrounds on this new class as well as some of the more stuff. Okay, the most important thing is, first and foremost, height and width. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go for 300 pixels. And for the weight, I'm also gonna go for 300 pixels. Okay, and now I need a background color for this one so that it looks somewhere. So I'm gonna go for initially for all zeros. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me save this and looks like it's not getting a reload. There we go. So now this is not really looking great, but we are having some things up here. So this is looking great, but now what happens if I change to this exact same color, which is in my body? Now it's not gonna be popping up that much because obviously this is nothing uh, being visible here. 
So what we can do after that is can introduce a box shadow. This will be popping up in a moment. So entire play on this new morphism is all about the box shadow and we actually give two kind of box shadows. First one which is coming up let's just say from the top left side. So first one is going to be negative uh, three pixels then the negative three pixels on y axis as well. Then we're going to define the blur radius which is going to be five pixel is fine and then we're going to provide a color of all white. I guess that's the one. And also separated by comma, we're going to provide another shadow. So let's go ahead and do that. This one is going to be three pixels and three pixels. And let's go for 15 pixels uh, of a blur radius. And we are going to go for all the black. There we go. Okay, so there we go. This is absolutely harsh. I do agree, but let's actually move this one here a little bit. So we're going to have a little bit of the margin from all the sides. So let's get a margin, not max, margin of uh, 20 pixels so that we can see that. And probably 120 pixels. There we go. Now it's looking nice. So this is actually the harsh implementation of the new morphism. There we go. But now I hope you can understand the significance of the color that we are having. Now the background color and my element color is of same types and that's why it is popping up so much. I surely can play around with more colorful elements but in the new morphism majority of the designers are playing with the subtleties in the colors. Now, of course, this is not the exact implementation that we want to put out. So what we can do is we can actually specify the alpha value so that these are not like harsh white and the harsh black. So for example, I can, you can definitely use instead of these hash values, you can use RGBA, which is more accurate in this case, but I can just go ahead and add a 70 here and save that. And now it's more subtle here on this white. It makes it a bit more of grayish and I can add this one here. Like, let's just say, let's go for 90 and I can go ahead and play with this. Now, surely this is not giving me the exact same white that I want to have. Uh, probably I can go for something like 90 which is going to be more shadowy but again the more radius you can have you can play around with this one and that's going to be absolutely totally on your creativity but this is the whole basic idea of it i'm going to go for 70 again because that's a bit more and here also i'm going to go for like more over of uh, 80 uh, so that we don't have that much probably 70. Again, you can play around whole day on this one, but that's the whole idea. Now, many times you might want to have like sharp shadows of white here. Definitely you can play around with these values, but the whole idea is to have these types of two uh, shadow, box shadows especially. Okay, this is the basics of it. Now what you're gonna see apart from this one that when you are having these kinds of element, people don't like to have sharp corners. So we do have border radius in this one. So we're going to go for border radius. And this one is pretty high in this case. What I have actually noticed is something like 25. And this is more looking like now, yeah, that's kind of a design I have seen more over. Okay, uh, one more kind of design that you might have seen is very similar to new morphism, but it's actually shadow inside the element. And we can do that just by using one keyword, which is inset. Uh, save that. And there we go. It goes. And also on the second shadow. So we're going to go ahead and do the inset and this might be the exact effect that you might have seen in variety of tutorials and stuff like that. So there we go. Now, apart from that, uh, playing around with the stuff is totally on to you that how you want to go ahead and play around. And uh, it's totally on you that how you want to go ahead and do that. Probably you don't like 25 pixels. You would like something like 50%. You can go ahead and play around with that. Again, I can spend an entire day in discussing that how this white shadow should look like or how that black shadow should look like. But that's the whole idea of how we are having this one. So again, two kinds of shadow. One is going to be absolute shade of white, absolute shade of black. Again, it can be a little bit gray. And make sure you are playing around with the colors in the background as well as the color in your element. That's the whole thing which is making this new morphism. So again, go ahead, uh, play around with it a little bit and let me know what you are creating, uh, what element you have inserted inside this division, how beautiful it is looking up, how you have played with the whites and the blacks make a story of it and post me up on this Instagram. I would definitely love to reshare what you have created with that. So go ahead. Today is the day you play around with the new morphism. Let's catch up in the next video.